Hey guys, this is Savvy with Savvy Goes Solo. I'm here today to play Wardens, which is a 24xx hack. I am using Mythic and the Location Crafter Worksheet. I will be doing my rolls off screen with Foundry. And uh, yeah, I will also be using this little solo oracle specifically for 24xx games um, just to keep the keep the story going the less brain power i have to use the better the better in my opinion so you can see i've already rolled up a character character creation is very fast and simple you roll on some tables you make some choices and voila that's what i've got my character's name is zamir she's a mystic she has a few skills that might come into play. She can cast some incantations, which are which are one-time spells. And she has a spirit guide um, that I chose specifically because she can be reborn once after death. 24XX is a deadly system. It is not very forgiving. Well, I wouldn't say that. I would say as long as you have items, you can be okay. Uh, we'll get into how that works in the game. I have also rolled up our threads. Our quest is to save villagers from a corrupted beast. Our location is the overgrown ruins of an archaic city. Our threat is a murderous cult of the Seven Daggers, and the artifact at stake is a moon sickle, which I can't remember what it does, it says in the game, but it is something that we don't want falling into the wrong hands. And so with that said, we can get started. As you can see, I have filled out my location crafter worksheet. I have even started out the location, and I have my known elements over here. We'll get into that later. So for now, now we are going to start with our first our first scene. She is already in this archaic city, which is abandoned. Um, and I've got classy and odd. So I think it's a place where it's been around longer than time itself, basically. And it's been really built up. Uh, it used to be the home of the, the monarchs or the people in charge, the royal families, all that jazz. Uh, but now it's abandoned. So, or supposedly abandoned. It's not a, it's not a center point of the world anymore. And they've moved on, but that doesn't mean there isn't stuff still happening here. So we are going to some dice and we will see what happens. Let me see what I can do here. Oh, you'll see my dice rolls on the sidebar there. That's perfect. So let's go with, um, she's in the market. We rolled up encounters. We got none. We got objects and I, it was expected and well, I can't remember if it was expected or random. Either way, I had thought it would be a dagger. Let me see what is happening here. I'm going to make an event check. You can see it says, what is happening in the market? Introduce a new NPC, debase illusions. So I've got my NPC over here. I, uh, I'm using, what is it? DMHeroes.com because it is a pretty cool. I like it a lot. And, um, we'll go get into our character, our mythic adventure sheet here and we'll put in our character. Technically, you're supposed to do this at the end of the scene, but I'm just going to do it right now because I want to. So we've got Rena Zatchet. Interesting. Let me see if I can copy her image over here. That would be cool. There we go. Brenna Zatchet. There she is. Okay. So I've got her saved. Perfect. Let's see. Back to it. I got distracted. Okay. Debase Illusions is our thing here. What is happening in the market? Debase Illusions. So what I think is when Zemira goes into the market here, first of all, I don't think that this archaic city is technically like fully abandoned. I don't think it's fully abandoned. I do think I'm going to specify this. I'm going to say it was the old capital, the original capital, no longer. So yes, it's the archaic city, the original capital of this world, but it is no longer that capital. And I think that I have to refresh this. 
the original capital no longer. So there's still people here. There's still stuff going on. It's just old, outdated, and no longer a place where people flock to. It's not a great economic center like it once was. Um, and that lets me put people here because I'm with the word abandoned. It's like nobody's here. But, uh, yes. Debase Illusion. So what's her name? Brenna is in this. She's in the market and she is feel like she's a proselytizer. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But oh, I just realized. So we decided that our scene that we're proposing, we are in the market in an archaic city. Brenna, a human washer, washer, is in the streets, is in the streets, shouting about the is she shouting about the cult that is the threat? I would say it's probably likely. Oh, I need to reset our chaos factor. <laughs> we are. What's this? We start the game at four. So here we go. Yes, she's debasing illusions. So I feel like she is trying to reveal the cult. And I feel like it is likely that that is, the, that is what's going on. So what, what is Brenna shouting about? Is she, whoops, is Brenna shouting about the cult? Yes. Exceptional, yes. So she absolutely is. She is in the streets shouting about the cult. It's the cult of seven daggers, I believe. Shouting about the cult of se seven daggers, trying to get people to listen, and I will stop there. So that is my scene proposal. We are in the market in an archaic city. Brenna, a human washer, is in the street shouting about the cult of seven daggers, trying to get people to listen. Zamir sees this, and she probably wants to know more. Let's check and see if our scene is altered. Scene proceeds normally. Perfect. Okay, let's... Washer. I'm just going to assume that somebody who washes things. It doesn't really matter. Scene proceeds normally. Okay, cool. Ooh. Good. Dagger. So Zamir knows that she is here to save villagers from a corrupted beast, but I don't know that she knows about the murderous cult yet. But I do know that uh, corrupted beasts generally come from, you know, usually it's always a cult that has caused this to happen. And I think Zamir is aware of this as a warden. She will have encountered things like this before of this nature. And so she is going to approach She's going to approach Brenna and let's see where I did that. I did. Okay, Zamir heads towards the market. Hearing the shouts of a woman in the street, she approaches her. The talk about cults peaked having piqued her interest. And so now we are going to find out what um We've, we've got some traits, so that lets us know something about her. We know that she wants to be friends with everyone, but she also loves solitude, so that's interesting. We're going to do a behavior check on her. I've got theme, knowledge, identity, washer, and she is not actively pursuing that identity, so I've got that on a zero. For the mod, for personality, I rolled gracefully interesting, and I did a plus two for that. Um, whenever I rolled it, and then uh, I would say, is she being gracefully interesting? I'll just put that up to the fate check. No, she is not. And is she struggling with her allies? Because her activity says struggle allies. And I'm not even going to ask this question. I think that she is. I think that um, her allies could be interpreted as 
the people in this city and they're not believing her. So she's struggling with that. So I've got that. Roll that. And now let's see what she does. So. Performs an expected PC continue. NPC continues. Okay. Okay, so we got NPC continues. So she is going. So as the mirror approaches her, Brenna is not going to stop what she's saying. I think that she is going to keep on. I think she is used to people looking at her, but um, they never stop to interact. They just kind of ignore her. Uh, and she just keeps on with what she is saying, talking about the cult. And since she does want to be friends with everyone, as is the trait I got there, then I, and it says she continues, she's not going to debuff Zamir, but I think Zamir is going to have to interrupt her. And Zamir interrupts her and says, may I speak with you about what is happening? Okay, I'm going to them like this. There we go. That way I remember what her identity and personality and everything are. So, we have that. So, Brenna continues on shouting about the cult, but no one seems to be listening. Zemir uh, stops in front of her, makes eye contact, and asks her to stop a moment to talk about this cult. There we go. Okay. Brenna continues on chatting about the cult, but no one seems to be listening. Zamir stops in front of her, makes eye contact, and asks her to stop for a moment to talk about this cult. Uh, we know that there is a dagger. Let's ask if Brenna has the dagger. No, absolutely not. She does not have the dagger. Optional no. So that's a no and. So not only so not only does she not have the dagger, she doesn't have any weapons on her at all. She is exceptionally pacifistic. And that is why she is imploring she won't do anything about this herself, but if she can find somebody who can take on this cult, I think that's what's going on here. So Let us see what happens next. Samir stops in front of her, makes eye contact, and asks her to stop for a moment to talk about this. Uh, we'll just leave everything to faith. We say, has to be for this question. Does Brenna stop to talk? Yes, she does st stop to talk. And, um... So, what does she know? What does Brenna tell Zamir about the cult? What they are and what they're doing is what we're going for here. Sounds about right on track for our stuff. Okay, what does Brenna tell Zamir about the cult description? was an anger emotion ceaselessly defeated an action was anger emotion release goals so i know exactly what's going to happen here brenna zamir asks what exactly about this cult can you tell me i've heard that there's something going on here and you obviously believe so as well brenna looks at her 
And I would say that she is very excited that somebody has stopped to listen to her. And she, but she doesn't talk very well. She talks very fast, stumbling over her words. And she's also excited to talk to Zamir that somebody would pay attention to her. And so she just spills out what is going on. She tells her that the, the cult is angry that they are rising up because they, they don't feel like they've been able to overtake the city or accomplish their goals, whatever it is. They want to take control of something. And so they are going to release something sinister that's what we're gonna go with that release goals the cult is angry cult is angry okay the cult is angry because they have not been able to overtake the city there are rumors that they plan on unleashing some sinister force or monstrosity to do it for them and if we go look at our nifty little threads here we got save the villagers from a corrupted beast which is what that would be and we've got the cult of the seven daggers as a threat and so what this has tied our whole little story together um all all in the beginning without me even needing to roll anything yet i promise i will make some rolls soon but for now we also if, if we look at our little character here, we have this story area, right? Wants the party to burn their spouse's favorite book. Wants to steal from Steiner Schelfer, which is another character that I could potentially generate if I wanted to use this, this part here. Um, I... If I was playing in a with a more sandbox mindset, this is brilliant and I love it. But because I just want to try out Mythic Variations 2 and my various things here, this is my first solo game, I've rolled up what I need to do. I kind of just want to play through this and not get too sidetracked by little side quests. Uh, in the future, I would love to see where this tool takes me. But for now, we can still use it here, though. Let's use it. Wants the party to burn their spouse's favorite book. I am going to say, well, I'm going to ask. We're going to ask. We'll use the Mythic GM emulator. And we are going to ask. Is Brenna's spouse a part of the cult? Is Brenna's spouse a part of the cult? I'm going to go with unsure. exceptional yes so not only is Brenna's spouse a part of the cult they are the leader of the cult he is the leader let's see i'm going to um okay so this is interesting uh is Brenna's spouse a part of the cult? Exceptional, yes. Not only is he a part of the cult, he is their leader. Brenna says, my husband is the leader, but no one will listen. You need to destroy his sacred tome before it is too late to prevent him from summoning this creature. So that is pretty strong there. And so in that way, I can use some of these things to just ask questions and try to lead me along the story. We're going to skip this right here. This wants to steal from Steiner Schulfer. Uh, that could easily be a um, side quest. But like I said, I'm not interested in doing that right now with this game. So I feel like we are pretty good here um, with this scene. Uh, we, yeah, let me... I need to do this. One. I am a stickler about things looking the same. Holy moly. Okay. 
And so there's our first scene. Scene one. We can name these. The market. Um, let's see, where does the dagger come in? Because we have a dagger. We know Brenna doesn't have it. Um, does the dagger, does somebody get attacked here? Yes. Okay, this is what happens. Um, this is what we're going to do. Who gets attacked? Does is it Brenna? And I would say I would personally say that it's very likely that it's Brenna who gets attacked because she is doing all this very publicly. Not only that, her husband is the leader. He could have yeah, I'm gonna say it's very likely. Yes, it is Brenna. So, is it ranged or is it up close? I wonder if I can, let me ask. We know that it's a dagger, which can be thrown technically. Let me see, let me just ask it. What is she? Obviously, focus is Brenna. Hmm. I don't know about the carry illness, but freely rough, the descriptor, it kind of tells me that this is up close and personal. And so I think that someone in the crowd because like i said this is still an active city someone in the crowd um kind of stumbles into her and all of a sudden she is stabbed or they go to stab her does let me let me roll some things let me see um, hmm. I'll roll a d6. I'll have to just do a d6. So I want to know if I notice this person. So I'll roll a d6 and see what happens. Oh, no. Obviously. Oh, no. Okay. I don't notice. I am Zimir. I, whatever am encompassed in her story as she's speaking and i'm not even gonna roll on this dice because i know damage or kill someone that is the one that makes the most sense poor brenna i'm gonna have to take her off my npc list she left as soon as she came while brenna speaks with zamir um, here's a question. Does this person retreat? I'm, I'm generally, I'm not sure. Does the attacker retreat? I'm not sure. I just want to know. Exceptional, yes. This person runs, sprints away. And Zamir is caught between wanting to go after them or stay with Brenna to try to help her. Um, you know that it was a disaster that she fatally stabbed uh, Brenna. This person fatally stabbed Brenna. But at the same time, I have medicine and I would like to see if I can't, I can't save her. So let's, let's just roll a d8 and find that out. Oh, I got an eight. Okay, the max. So here's what's going to happen. Um, okay, so Zamir springs into action. 
Mir springs into action and resuscitates Brenna, wrapping her wounds and getting her to the nearest doctor. And I think that's the end of that scene. That was pretty neat. I like that. Um, we do have Brenna is still alive. Let's see. And we do have the strange attacker is what we'll call them. Whoever that was. Brenna, the strange attacker. And um, threads are the same. Cult of the Seven Daggers. I wonder. I'm going to add another thread because... That's so broad. We'll keep it. We'll keep that there. We're going to roll on uh, or to add her next task, which is to destroy the cult leader's home. Oh, destroy the sacred tome. Duh. Destroy the sacred home. And you know what? I just realized. Inner Schulfer is Brenna Zatchett's uh, husband and the cult leader. And that is who she wants to steal from. There he is. Steiner Schulfer. He's an old half-elf tutor. Um, interesting. Okay, that's what we got for now. Uh, that was fun. And we will come back next time and go on to the next scene. Thanks, guys.